right, and in the last part of the lecture, which is optional, I am going to tell you about um, two situations where we can actually find an integrating factor. So uh, let me j just um, emphasize that both are not really very common situations, but uh, so the, the, there is a method to, well, if some condition is satisfied to, to find an integrating factor, right? So, uh, but th there is not, no kind of general method. So, um, but sometimes it works, right? So here is, um, here is uh, what we're going to do. So um, if um, our functions M and Y satisfy certain uh, need condition, then we can find an integrating factor, which is a, uh, a function of just one variable, right? So generally speaking, again, so generally speaking, it is impossible to find an integrating factor, but uh, if the integrating factor depends only on one variable, only on X or only on Y, then it is possible to do it, all right? So let me let me explain how we can do it. So um, suppose that we have a differential equation, so M of X, Y, DX plus N of X, Y, DY equals zero. And suppose that we, so we uh, multiply it by an integrating factor, so i. So i is again a function of, um, uh, generally speaking, it is a function of two variables, right? So, but what happens if i is a function of just one variable, right? So what if i is a function of, of just x? So in that case, our i, as a function of just x is an integrating factor, even only if the new differential equation is exact, right? So, but what, what does it mean? For this differential equation to be exact, the derivative of this with respect to y should be equal to the derivative of uh, i n with respect to x, right? So let me first differentiate i m with respect to, to y, right? So, um, now, i is a function of just x. So when I differentiate i with respect to y, I just get zero, right? So or it is a constant with respect to y. So the derivative of i m with respect to y is just i times the partial derivative of m with respect to y. Plus, now i is a function of x and we are differentiating with respect to x. So it means that uh, we've got to use the product rule to, to figure it out, right? So according to the product rule, so this, this is going to be the partial derivative of i with respect to x times n plus i times the partial derivative of n with respect to, to x. Um, sorry, and the, 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 these two should be equal, right? Yeah. Okay, uh, now what if I move this thing over to the left-hand side? Then we're going to get i um, basically m y minus n x and this should be equal to i x uh, times times n so i x and i x is is really d i d x this should be equal to i which is a function of x times m y minus n x divided by n. Now, uh, this is in turn a differential equation uh, on i, right? But the problem is that the right-hand side of the, this differential equation um, actually depends on, on y, right? And we probably don't really know how to do it. But if it so happens that this thing uh, the, the, this term is a function of just just x, right? So what if, I'm not saying that it is going to happen, but what if it happens, right? So if this is a function of just x, then what we get is, is this, di dx equals i times f of x. And this is, in fact, a separable differential equation uh, on, on i or a linear differential equation on i. I mean, so it is both linear and separable. And you can just solve it for for i, right? So solve it, 
so okay, four i and solving it for for i but again so we don't need to know all possible integration factors it is enough to just find to, to find just one of them so i of x is going to be e to the power antiderivative of f of x dx right so th this is how it works right and th th this is the first condition the, the second condition uh is is kind of similar only in with respect to to y so notice is that in in either condition so we have my minus nx so and uh, why why do we have it because you know the condition for exactness is that mi equals nx so which means that mi minus nx is zero right so if either of these um forms is is already zero then it means that our um differential equation is already exact and we don't really need to do anything right uh, but if it is not zero then sometimes it is possible to find an integrating factor that depends on the just on, on just one variable and so basically the the trick here is, is very similar to the integrating factor for just first order linear differential equations well, anyway, so that's the same thing only printed out, and uh, here is how we can apply it, right? So uh, how do we solve the, this differential equation? Um, so this thing is, is, is my m, right? So the, this thing is my m. Uh, let, let me write down the two conditions. So the two possible conditions are that m y minus n x divided by n this should be a function of just x or so the alternative condition is uh, n x minus m y i mean it's just the, the same thing only uh, n x comes with a positive sign and n y comes with a negative sign divided by m should be a function of, of, of y now uh, which of these two conditions is satisfied here right so first let us find m y minus n x so m y minus m x is the partial derivative of m with respect to y is going to be minus two y, and the partial derivative of f n with respect to x is just just y. Well, good, right? So m minus m y minus n x is a function of just y, right? So it's kind of, I guess, it is a good sign, right? So uh, now we've got to, to figure out which of the two conditions holds here right and um basically uh, we should try to divide these either by m n or by m right so if it were the first condition for the first condition we should divide this by n right so by x y um yeah yeah sorry the, the, this is of course just minus three y <laughs> I, I, I should have just done it from from, from the start so minus three uh, y and <coughs> y cancels out and what i get what we get is just minus three over x so which is you know what we really want to to get so we want to get a function that only depends on x here right so the the, the first condition is satisfied well uh just just out of curiosity so let me show you that the second condition is not satisfied probably right so for the second condition um uh, we have minus 3y and we've got to divide it by well strictly speaking 3y right so uh, 3y divided by 2x minus y square and this is not a function of just y so this is not a function of just y because it has x so the second condition is not satisfied but if the first is all right so we know that the first condition is satisfied and uh, so let me rewrite it so the, this is my m this is my n and i have already verified that this uh, condition m y minus n x over n is minus 3 over x and this is a function of just x right so this is a function of just x 
Now the integration factor is going to be um, i of x, the e raised to the power the antiderivative of the this thing, so three minus three over x dx, which is really x to the minus three. Okay, uh, now let me multiply by the integrating factor. So multiplying with the integrating factor, three minus three, I'm going to get this two uh, x to the minus two minus x to the minus three. Um, y square dx plus uh, x to the minus 2 times y dy, right? So this is the new equation that I obtained from the original one by multiplying with the integrating factor. Okay, now, is it true that the new differential equation is exact? I mean, from theory, we know that it should be exact, so let, let, let me just verify. So it means that the partial derivative of this with respect to y should be equal to the partial derivative of, of this with respect to x, right? So the partial derivative of the, the first um, term with respect to y is, is what is minus uh, 2 x to the minus 3 y. And the partial derivative of the second term with respect to uh, x is minus 2 x to the minus 3 y. And they are indeed equal. Okay, great. So it means that um, our differential equation is indeed exact, right? So the remaining step is to, to, to solve it. Um, okay, so let me just uh, rewrite my differential equation. So after multiplying with the integrating factor, I get the following thing. So I get um, 2x to the minus 2 minus x to the minus 3 y square dx plus x to the minus 2 y dy. All right, and the coefficient in front of uh, x is supposed to be the partial derivative of the potential with respect to x, and the coefficient in front of dy should be the partial derivative of u with respect to y. So which means that u itself is going to be the antiderivative of this 2x to the minus 2 minus x to the minus 3 y squared d dx, which is um, minus 2x to the minus 1, um, minus 1 half x to the minus 2 y squared plus, generally speaking, plus some function of y. Right, so now uh, the partial derivative of u with respect to y. Now we to differentiate this thing to, uh, to find the uh, c of y. It's going to be uh, the first term does not have y, so it's just zero. The second term I'm differentiating with respect to y, um, two over one is minus x to the minus two y, right? Um, oh, I think I, I made a mistake, it should be plus here. Right, <laughs> because if I differentiate this with respect to x, I get minus two times x to the minus three. So, and I, I do have a minus sign here. Okay, so it should be plus here. Okay, so plus uh, x to the minus. Um, sorry. So th that's it. So th th this is correct. So it checks out. Uh, so it is just exactly the, this term. So the, there is no plus c prime or anything. So which means that, that there is no c of y here. So that, that, that's just it. So the, this is my in, um, potential. Right? So the, this is my potential function. Minus 2x to the minus 1 plus 1 half x to the minus 2 times y square. So the solution to this differential equation is the potential function equals some constant c. OK. So, and basically, that's almost it. Uh, the remaining part is probably to solve for, for y. And in order to solve for y, I've got to multiply this by, by, what, by 2x squared. Multiplying this by 2x squared, I will get minus 4x plus y squared equals 2cx squared. So, y square is going to be 2cx square plus 4x. So y is going to be plus minus square root of this. Okay, 
and I guess that, that, that's it. So here is the printed version. Um, well, uh, they did not solve for Y here. Well, I guess it, it's all right. So if you do not want to solve for Y, you can just leave it in, in the given form. Well, unless it is explicitly required to solve for Y. And uh, well, finally, th there is one more similar example that I don't really want to spend your time on going through. Um, but basically the idea is, is the, the same, right? So only now, if this is M, this is N, um, basically what we do, we find M Y minus N X, uh, M Y is two X minus uh, the partial derivative of N with respect to X is going to be um, two X plus two X Y. So, which is just two x y, and now the, the question is, uh, we we've got to choose between two uh, x y divided by n x square minus x square y square is this is is the, this this a function of x versus minus two x y divided by m, and m is two x y, is the, this is it true that this is a function of y? And um, apparently this is not true, but this is true. And then you just kind of proceed in, in the similar manner, only um, Kind of symmetrically, so your integrating function is going to be um, is going to be um, a function of just y, right? So, well, I guess I miscalculated. Oh yeah, it should be two x y squared, right? I miscalculated um, here, two x y squared. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, so you can find the int integrating factor. So this is the integrating factor, and then you multiply everything with the integrating factor, and then you can find the potential, uh, and, and so on and so forth. And in the end, you will get something like this. In this case, um, it is possible to solve for x, but it is not possible to solve for y, right? So, but you, you can just leave it as, as is. So usually with exact differential equations, we just, uh, leave it in implicit form all right uh so just just one more time um th there is just one more remark and finally uh, the last quiz in this lecture